Hi folks, and welcome back to another Travels of Red Rover. I'm Sean. And I'm Kareen. And where are we today, Kareen? We are at Snow Canyon State Park in Southern Utah, just west of St. George. And for the next couple of days we're going to be here. We're going to do some hiking and a little photography, we hope. And I hope you enjoy the trip. Hi folks and welcome to Jenny's Canyon. Uh, it's a really tiny slot canyon uh, and uh, we're just going to go have a look. We've never been here before and see if it has some photo potential. So the parking lot for Jenny's Canyon is just a, 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 st a stop off along the road and not very big and then uh, the walk in from that area is about half a mile or less. And if you have to go past that and start park in the Sand Dunes parking lot, it's about three quarters of a mile walk. Crean and I love photographing slot canyons, and we'll often go way out of our way to go visit one. In the case of Jenny Canyon, we wanted to go up and have a look at the canyon in brighter light, and that was occurring in the afternoon, just to get a feel for the canyon, where the light would be best, what uh, potential uh, structures would be interesting to photograph. We quickly realized that there were lots of potential opportunities uh, for compositions, but decided there were too many hot spots to photograph that afternoon. So we decided to come back in the morning when the light would be more indirect and softer. Good morning, folks. Well, Creed and I are back at Jenny's uh, Canyon. It's the next morning, obviously. Nice brisk morning. The reason we've come back at this time is we're hoping that with the sun on kind of a very stark angle that we get some really nice uh, reflected light inside the canyon. So that's our goal for this morning, is to take some photographs with some nice reflected light. So this trail is pretty easy to walk in. It's very short. Uh, it's quite uh, fine sand, like dune sand. So it does uh, make the walking a little interesting when you're extra heavy with camera bag and that sort of thing. But as you can see, we can motor along pretty fast and it's very easy to find. So most of the canyon is fairly narrow and there's a few people that come up here so we don't want to have all our gear in the way. We found this little area here that's a bit wider and we're going to get set up with our camera gear here, leave our bags down by the side of the walls and walk a short way up to the narrow spot and do our photography up there. And that way, when people come by, we can easily get our tripods out of the way. The bags won't be on our backs, making us wider than necessary. And people can enjoy the canyon with us. One of the reasons we decided to come this morning is we were here yesterday afternoon, which was a Sunday, and it was quite busy. And we could see that with the early sunset, it was going to be busy right up until quite dark in the afternoon. So we felt that uh, a Monday morning would be quieter and we wouldn't be in other people's way quite so much. And it would still give us an opportunity to get some reflected light on these canyon walls if we were here early enough. Now it's probably an hour after sunrise and we are on the east side of the canyon the uh, canyon here, Jenny's Canyon with the Slot Canyon portion, faces in a northerly direction. So the sun is going to rise up to the south since we're in the later part of fall. And probably around 10 o'clock it'll get too bright in here. But we're here just about an hour after sunrise. And the sun is still behind the hills to the east. The other reason to come up here at this time of day, though, is because the light is very, very gentle inside the canyon. Uh, any lighting in the canyon is all reflected, 
and uh, the upper walls are very red, orange, brown kind of a color. So we get this uh, beautiful kind of glowy light down in the canyon. So it's almost impossible uh, not to get a nice photograph in here because the, there are so many interesting structures uh, that it's pretty easy to photograph the canyon. Uh, now I'm using um, a polarizer this morning and I don't know if I really need it or not. Um, uh, it does bring out a little bit of, it does make the picture a little bit richer, um, but otherwise, I, you know, you really don't, don't need it. Uh, generally speaking, I'm shooting at about f11, um, and we're getting about a two and a half second uh, shutter speed right now, ISO 100 as well. Uh, so it's a, a pretty easy shot. And again, because the light is so soft, you really just have to find some interesting structures and uh, creating those compositions is really very, very straightforward. So Karina and I are working on a very similar shot right now. It's just really the whole camera, or I'm sorry, the whole canyon. And uh, right now, because again, because the light is so nicely reflected, we're really getting sort of the blues and blacks uh, in the stone that we really didn't see yesterday at all. And uh, just makes the photograph absolutely gorgeous. Uh, a lot of fun just shooting this. Kareen's using a uh, portrait orientation right now. I've done pretty much the same thing. See the back of my camera there. And it's a really, really pretty, pretty spot. Again, the settings are really straightforward. There's really no complexity to this shot at all in terms of taking it, you really just have to line it up uh, so that you get a nice even exposure across the uh, width of the canyon. Make sure you have your f-stop high enough, like f11 or maybe a little higher, so you get nice deep focus all the way down into the back of the cave. But otherwise, very straightforward. <laughs> like this can be very busy with lots of different angles and lighting and it can become very complex if you try and do the entire canyon as a shot so sometimes what is helpful is to look for interesting structures color variations and patterns in the rocks and do that as a smaller picture of the overall canyon that's what I've done for my shot here. And mostly what I'm showing is the left side wall. And it's giving me the depth of the canyon following along the wall. There's interesting vertical lines there that's keeping the, the uh, composition intriguing for the viewer rather than just flat but it's not got too much busyness. And I've looked for a shot where there aren't too many uh, really dark shadows and bright highlights. I've tried to even out the tones. things you'll find when you work in a spot like this, especially if there's a couple of you shooting, is the uh, opportunities to shoot and the, some of the compositions will put you right on top of each other. So it's important to uh, make sure that you're helping the other photographer by not walking in front of them and um, getting in their way. Uh, Karina and I have uh, been doing this for a while, so we're pretty good at keeping out of each other's way and we kind of take turns as we move down the canyon. And one of the things that Karina and I do when we're in a really narrow spot like this 
is we try to coordinate our movements forward. So one of us doesn't just run ahead to shoot the obvious composition that they see. We actually work the entire canyon, starting at one end and working our way down the canyon. Now we're fairly fortunate today because we can only face in one direction. The light behind us is so bright that uh, we really can only work in uh, the direction we're currently pointing. It'd be almost impossible to shoot in the other direction because you just uh, your sensors would just be overwhelmed by the brightness. So it really works kind of well in this canyon. Now we're working in the canyon in very, very low light. And uh, so I've actually moved my ISO up to about 400 to give me a little bit more range uh, in uh, the shooting. But one of the things you want to make sure you do is you don't blow out your sensors on some of the bright spots because often the blacks uh, and the deep, deep, uh, sometimes they come out like a bit of a royal blue, uh, are so beautiful that you don't really want to wash those or lose that data uh, from your uh, shot. So be careful and, and have a really good look at your uh, um, histogram and make sure that you're not either uh, losing the blacks or blowing out the highlights. Another little trick or tip when you're working a canyon like this, and that is to remember that the light is changing all the time. So we started at the brightest part of the canyon and we've been moving our way in as the sun rises and lights the deeper parts of the canyon. So we've now gotten about halfway into the canyon and what was probably just sort of a really black, dark shot uh, when we first started is now starting to light up and really show some of the striations in the rock um, that give it that sort of be beautiful texture. Uh, and uh, so just be very aware of that, that the light is going to be constantly changing and you've got to kind of move along the canyon uh, as that light changes. on the wall that uh, lots of the kids like to climb up, see if I can get up here. Pretty good traction. And you can go through a little arch if you keep your head down. Will she get stuck? <laughs> <laughs> the key is not to stand up too soon. After Kareen stopped clowning around, we decided to try to shoot this tree right at the opening of the uh, canyon. The tree was uh, very, very brightly lit and the canyon was still fairly dark. It was a pretty looking shot. It took us a few tries, but I think we're pretty happy with the results. Well, this was a lot of fun up here in uh, Jenny's Canyon. What did, what did you think, Kareen? Lots of color and patterns to work with. Uh, Sean made an interesting suggestion that if we had uh, some sand to throw up, we could do like the uh, lower Antelope Canyon pictures with the uh, slowly filtering down sand off the shells, but we didn't bring our sand buckets today. No, that's, yeah, what we needed was uh, a, th a sand bucket and a thrower. Uh, <laughs> a little that would shovel. Made, you know, a little shovel, and that would have made it fun. A third person to th toss the sand. <laughs> yeah, and a third person to toss the sand, absolutely. It was actually a lot of fun in here. Kareen uh, just absolutely nailed the right time to be here. 
Uh, and it's uh, so for those of you that might want to follow us, it's uh, about an hour after the sun clears the uh, mountains to the south. No, mostly about an hour and a bit from sunrise. So, Or an hour and a bit from sun, a little more than that, almost two and a half hours from sunrise. And it's uh, pretty much done now for us. We had maybe 30 to 40 minutes in here. Right. That's the other thing. Um, once the brighter stone uh, starts to catch the sun, you start to get some real hot spots in your photograph. And then it just gets really, really hard to control the light. Well, folks, we sure hope you enjoyed our video today. If you did, give us a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to follow us, please subscribe. Hit that little button down below. And if you want to know when new videos are posted, you can hit that notification bell below. Until next time, bye for now. Bye for now. Bye.